Croix to a channel of light fluid. And we're back with more socially awkward. One she just brought out an uh, update a couple of days ago as I record this. It might be a bit longer by the time I get it uploaded because currently the internet isn't working. So I'll get on with this. And yeah, we're on Tom's route. And we're going to carry on where we left off last time. And if you remember, Tom just uh, told Jace he's bought a membership at Macon's gym for him. It's Tuesday. 5.45 a.m. Oh, damn it, I ran away again. Ah, why do I always do this? No, this is Tom's fault. He made me run away with his generosity. What the hell am I thinking? Ah. You're not sure, but during your self-reflection, a wild, handsome line appears. Ah, ah. You get startled and start running up the hill like being chased by a sneaky cucumber. Oh, why are you running? You slip and grind your face in, on the ground as you slide back down. Why are you running? Tom reaches you, but you start making incoherent noises that are similar to a whale call. Huh? He leans in closer, only to be disappointed by more of your whale calling. Well, if you can sing, I guess you're alright. You roll to face, you won't have your eyes blinded by the sun's evil rays. Ow! Dirt is stinging you with its... Dirt! You wince and involuntarily wipe your face with your dirty hands. Well, don't rub it, you'll get an infection. He takes a handkerchief out of his pocket and, kneeling down to your level, flicks away whatever dirt was hanging on your nose. <laughs> well, I'll need to clean you up and look at those wounds. No! You're going to get an infection. No! You protest by pulling on Tom's whiskers. Ow, 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 ow! Why are you acting like this? Because no means no! Ow! What's gone into you? You spend $180 on me. What? 15 times 12? Huh? Do it! Mm hmm. 180? Good. 180 worth of sin! With the battle cry of a thousand kittens, you run up to Tom and start punching his abs. <laughs> What's going on? Every punch carries a rage and sorrow every dollar Tom spent on subscription. What's a subscription? Oh. Well, if you don't want to go, then don't go. Impossible. I'd look bad if I don't show up at least a month. Just a month? Yes. <sighs> well, I was hoping this would be a good excuse to hang out some more. You want to hang out at the gym? At four in the morning for a year? Well, not only at the gym. But it's the only time I have that we could... I'm, 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 I'm. Are you crazy? I'm too old to wake up at four in the morning. Old well, people generally wake up at this hour. Not that old. Are you done yet? Do we feel the sins creeping up to you? Oh, I feel like burping. Then no! Until you admit your generous mistake. These fine abs shall be annihilated. And just like that he just walks away with a cat punch in his abs. You can't run away from your problems! Oh, 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 oh. Tuesday, 6.12am. <sighs> you won this battle. Oh, I'm surprised you kept punching all the way back. Ow. The salty sweat of your own body's cooling seeps into your battle wounds, making you wince into the sweetest and cutest of mews. 
Uh, let's clean you up, okay? Uh huh. Gentler. Oh, stop being a baby. It's just soap and water. Despite hissing, the brave lion presses on, pressing a damp towel on your face, that is. Ow! You're just acting. If we had peroxide, then I believe you. Heh. You can easily rub it down your face with a soapy wet towel, then dries it off with a new towel and smears ointment on the scratches. That should do it. Good thing your sister's had some ointment around. Well, they're both nurses. You can pretty much find anything in the medicine cabinet. Yet no peroxide. We said peroxide leaves a scar. Really now? Well, I've been using it a lot. He lifts up his pant leg, showing scars all over his legs. Hey, are you alright? Oh, I just grit it and take it like a man. Do you like pain? Well, it's unavoidable. Sometimes the road's too dry, sometimes it's too wet. And sometimes there are assholes who hog the whole road. You got into an accident? Ah, oh, just a few bumps and bruises, nothing serious. No crashing. I intend not to. Curious, you started poking the bumpy ones with your finger. Poke, poke. Ow, hey. This one looks like it has worms in it. You pointed slash poked at a lumpy six centimetre long scar at the end of his calf. Oh, that. A little accident with one of the riders doing practice. Idiot tried to pass me on a tight cliff. Did you kick him off the cliff? <sighs> I wish. He wanted to show off to his girl, but ended up losing face. Possibly a chunk of his nose. Yay, karma! After pulling a stunt like that, he was chewed out by the coach. I haven't seen him since, so he must have quit for another sport to impress his girlfriend in some other way. What a dick. Oh, annoying too. Kept talking about his girl the moment he joined. Dude was head over heels for her. Have I met the lady? Lady? Heh. <laughs> that lady has no decency. Every day she came in flaunting her new skimpy dress in front of us. Oh, I don't know where he sees in her, but apparently she's famous in the dance club. They start making out when they say goodbye. Uh, yeah, actually. Gross. I bet she has multiple boyfriends. What makes you say that? Skimpy clothes, public makeup, the need to get excited. Clear signs. How are those any clear signs? I think you've been misogynistic. Then answer me this. Has she ever locked eyes with you or anyone else when they exchange your bodily fluids? I can't believe I'm going along with this. Uh, yeah. And then rest my case. Someone in your team is getting turned on by her. Getting turned on? What is the name for it? Can't remember what. Okay, can we stop talking about this? This is John's influence written all over. Oh, definitely John's fault. Definitely John's fault. Meanwhile, uh, just so you know, I paid for a year because I wanted to help Macon with his gym. He had to go through a lot of things in a short amount of time. Can't you just donate instead? Oh, I tried. You're shaking like a scared little kitten. Hey! That's true. He's doing that thing you do when you try to decline something. When expressing a deep desire to say no, you sway every external part of your body to the last leg. He said he'd never take free money. So that's why I bought all of my friends a yearly membership. And how many friends do you have? I ain't answering that. <laughs> I want to eat something. I got some eggs and toast. Checking his watch, Tom's smile melts to a frown. Uh, maybe some other time. I still have to get my bike from the gym and then prepare for school. Oh, okay. Well, tomorrow then? 
Hmm? I don't need someone to wake me up at four. Thirty in the morning. I'm gonna give myself some leeway. You can faintly hear the gears whirring inside his head after a moment of silence. You must have said something weird again. Tom. Oh, I'll be here. Huh? Huh? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. You caught me by surprise. Usually I'd have to drag or coax you to do something. I thought you didn't want to do this anymore after... You got me to eat dirt? Yeah, sorry. I just... got a little excited. Oh, it's fine. But next time... Bring me something like hamburger or a box of cereal. Heh. <laughs> I'll bring a salad. Yeah. Glance in the pantry, see they only have two eggs, a half-empty box of cereal, and two packs of noodles. Hmm. Speaking of which... Opening the fridge, you'll find a carton of milk, a pack of yakult, and a glass pitcher of water. I'm going to stock up after class. Uh, be sure to include vegetables on the list. Unless... dairy. I'm a cat. I like milk. I well, don't feed into the stereotype. Never! <sighs> well, I better head out now. See ya, Jace. See ya, Tom. See ya. Tuesday, 7.27am. On your phone, you ponder about what to buy for groceries. What to buy? What to buy? I only have $53 left in my pocket. So, by my calculations... Yes, it's cup noodles, canned meat and rice again. During your life decisions, an orange figure came without your notice until... Huh? An orange dragon with sharp horns comes into the classroom and slams a pile of paper on the table. It shook you for a second, jerking you up you got caught by the teacher. The teacher divides a pile of papers in two and slams his claws on top of one. All right, you weak pieces of shit! He grabs the paper by the edge and waves it in the most condescending way possible. Everyone get one now! He throws it at the nearest victim with such force that even for a light flimsy paper, it somehow contoured the victim's face. Except him! Everyone jumps up from their seats and scrambles into a straight line. You're last in line. Everyone was scared of the demonic figure. You, however, just stare after mindedly to the side. John wasn't as relaxed as you are. Every step he takes makes his eyes wider with such focus and concentration, locking down his prey behind the bush. In this case, a student. When the time comes, he pounces at the paper, then runs away like a cheetah with prey in hand. Phew. Good luck. He pats you on the shoulder. You didn't feel any indifference to the situation. You planned to scream rape if the teacher ever did something horrible. You snickered yourself at the thought of it happening. When it was your turn, the teacher looks at you with such glaring eyes, as if you did something horrible to him in a past life. You lean your body away, trying to avoid biting range as you gingerly pick a paper out from under him. It was a sports application under PE. Reading everything from top to bottom, you wrote down the fundamentals needed, such as your name, address, age, waiver, etc. Please check the sports you'll be applying for for this school semester. You notice the gnashing of chalk dragging on the board. Looking up, you see the teacher writing down his name in a cursive font with coloured chalk. Looking at how we dress, there's a tinge of familiarity, but you can't put your finger on it. A question is floating around your head about the application. You didn't want to interrupt, nor did you feel it'd be of utmost importance, so you just waited for someone else to ask. When he was done, he read Cole S. Navarra. I'll be an unfortunate pay teacher this semester. You obviously wonder about the application letter. Here in Newbrook, students are encouraged to join an extracurricular activity, focusing it entirely on sports. Learn that Minecraft chess or checkers or blah. Watch them, you chickies. The academy is a good amount of fields to do all sorts of sports. Now you only need to fill out these forms. That way the school and I don't get in trouble for your bad behaviour. How will you grade us if we're all over the place? I'll be training with another instructor based on the sport you choose. Your grades will be based on the instructor who will report to me on your behaviour and performance. So I don't want to hear any complaints! 
I'm still in charge of all my responsibility. Now, choose your sport, hand it over, and start introducing each other. So this time... I can go with cycling. Oh, cycling, huh? You used to ride one with Tom back in the day. Maybe we can ride together again. Check. Oh, what you get? Oh, cycling. Chase after my brother, are ya? No. Hmm. Unsatisfied with your answer, John leans into your face from his seat. You turn your head away, hiding the evidence painted all over your face. You had sex, didn't you? No! Quiet! Tuesday, 12.01pm. So, how was doing with my bro? It was great. Did you two bang after? The sentence was both shocking yet predictable. Knowing him, he's probably doing it for the lols. Come on, you can tell me. You have the right to know as the brother. Gross, and no, you don't. Why do you want to know if I bang your brother? Oh, why not? Because it's weird. Unless you're into incest. Think of it as insurance. For what? You'll see once you bang my brother. Come on, the fact you took cycling is already a dead giveaway. Are you sure you're not going after my brother? Oh, why not? I want to hang out with Tom more. You sound a bit eager there. Oh, I am. Ho ho ho! Spill, what did you two do yesterday? We just ate and talked a lot. And it turns out that my dad is an asshole. Mr. Sircap. We lied to Tom, saying they never wanted to see him again. He said that? Well, that's what Tom told me. Well, I'm glad you two made up. Now, where's my dowry? What's up? Ready for your wedding rehearsal? Yay! Ow! Behave! I didn't do anything. Also, why are you here? Well, I was going to ask your help with Jace's housewarming. Jace has a new house? Where's my parents' apartment? Oh, sweet! Get you available every day. Ow! What's that for? Uh, sorry, I thought I heard something else. Mm, I think I heard the same thing. Hit him again. Why don't you start? Yeah. Anyways, I'm thinking of takeout. Any suggestions? A uh, takeout, huh? Or puppy beats? No. Let's be different, Chase. This ain't your normal birthday party. It's your independence. You got your own room, your own apartment. I'm still living under the roof of my parents. Yeah, but with no parents. Try something new for a change. Oh, I have to agree with John. For once. I mean, puppy bees for the fifth. Sixth time is fine. Uh, wouldn't you like to try something different for a change? You did move out of your parents' house. I mean, sure. But what do you guys want? Oh, sigh over your redirection. What? Both waved their hands dismissively in unison. Their reaction made you even more confused. Oh, there's a new fried chicken store opening today. I'll check it out and see if it's any good. I'll be great. Great, well you got food. What are you going to do? Oh, I'll get the drinks. I want royal lemon. Oh, I'll make sure. Now, for entertainment. Guess I'll pick up our old consoles as well. I don't bother, I already got that covered. I pre-ordered a click a month ago. Whoa! Ah, you rich bastard, I want a click too. Well, go pre-order one. I don't have the money. Well, the console can be docked to a big screen TV and the controllers can be detached for two players. If I don't have a TV. You can have our old one. Can I fetch it from Dad? Well, he's not using it, so I might as well give it to someone else. How are you going to bring it over with a bike? 
I still have my side cargo attachment. What do we do groceries with? Yeah. Is that a bit too small? Well, I'm sure it'll fit. TV's just 32 inches. Well, don't do anything dangerous, okay? All right. Gross. Tuesday, 1.49 p.m. Almost halfway through doing nothing in class. The teacher leaves as she finishes introducing the subject she'll be teaching. Another teacher comes in, someone you're terribly familiar with. It was a PE teacher. With him is a stack of boxes he drops from a metre high onto the table, grabbing everyone's attention. You'll be fitting your PE uniforms! The class moans. Shut it! Anyone not wearing a uniform is marked absent. The girls will head to the next classroom and have themselves fitted by a female teacher. The boys start to bark on wolf whistles the girls head out with a look of disgust. Shut it! I want this done before two! The teacher drags his chair next to the door and pulls up a pen with a click. Go! All the boys scramble to the teacher's desk and start picking up their sizes. Some took off their shirts while others put uniforms over their shirts. Once they decide on their size, they walk up to the teacher and present themselves. The teacher scans them. Name and size. Kevin Medium. Run it back and get out. Next. A Jamie, extra large. Again, the teacher scans the student. You look like a large. Huh? Next. Your anxiety starts to kick in. You look down, thinking. I really want to go home now. I don't want to get exposed so soon. Maybe I just have to teach if I can do it in the bathroom. I'll wait for someone with a shirt to go out. You wait for a bit, it turns out almost every boy here isn't shy about stripping their top off. In fact, males today show off their bodies to portray dominance. No, nobody's doing it! Shit, shit, shit! Now here. You jolted from a familiar voice. It was John, and he knew three sizes, a small, a medium and a large shirt. I'll put one on, you can decide what size you want. That way you don't have to expose yourself. Phew. Thanks, John. What are bros for? John puts on a small. It fits his physique like a second skin. It's a little tight, but it'll stretch. Mm, no. I'll try a medium. Okay. How's this? Oh, perfect. Alright. The logo design sucks, though. Oh, it's ugly. Yeah. So, you have your own apartment? Yeah. Ever thought, you know, invite someone over and... Ow! Horny jail. You didn't even let me finish. Finish it then. Why are you two still here? It's almost two and I'm missing two names. Yikes. John goes over to your side and presents himself to the teacher. Uh, Jay Sircap. Uh, medium. I didn't ask your name and size, that's why you're not in uniform. Looking down your punitive size, a foot and a half taller dragon stands before you. Uh, Cats these days, no discipline at all. Hurry up and put on the damn shit, I got a schedule to keep. Uh, yeah. Well! What's going on here? What are you doing here? Aren't you from second year? Well, I was waiting for my brother until I heard you yelling. Cole immediately glances at John, then back to Tom to confirm. Your brother, huh? I guess that's him. Cole points at John with his thumb behind his back. John was glaring the teacher like a knife. He's fiddling with his phone behind his thigh without looking at it. Uh, yes. And the other one is my friend. Do you have a problem with me, kid? Oh, uh, yeah. Teachers harassing students. Oh, what's your size? A small. A little snowflake. A medium. Cole, presumably, writes on your size on his chart. Without looking back, takes off his the boxes of shirts. When the orange dragon finally went out of sight, your mind started to feel... Scared. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you loudly gasp, confused as to why you're panicking. John backs away, trying not to touch you. Jace, calm down, he's gone. I, I, I know. Pain resonates from your chest, almost like being stabbed. <laughs> Attack already started, your body is burning up. Jace, calm down. John's voice gets further and further away. Your extremities start getting colder and colder. Get her. It's no use. The overloading sensation of danger is making you confused. Stop! Listen to me, body! He's gone! 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 You repeat the words over and over in your head, but soon you begin to doubt yourself and give in to the fear. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> you watch your hands tighten to a fist, clenching so hard that it hurts. <laughs> you try to release your hands from their tightened grip. Come on, come on, come on! The danger is in your hands. You need to control it. You need to take control. If you can control it, then... Well, I just need to take control. Frustrated, you take off your hat and toss it to the ground. I can do it! I can do it! They defy you. The creases of your palms stretching out in a wicked smile, mocking you as they cover themselves once again. Oh, shit, fuck, shit, fuck! Then you stop, or rather, you lose control. No, no! He rest, Jace. The soothing voice echoes from the far distance. Huh? He rest, Jace. Come on, you can do it. I, I can't. Yes, you can. I, I, I can't. You can, Jace. Just reach out. Calm. Deep breaths, Jace. Just take deep breaths. I know you can do it. That's it. Just push your hands against mine. With every breath, you reach out your hand and press it against an invisible furry wall. Good, good. Keep going. You push and push until your fingers finally release themselves and slide through the wall. And that's my buddy. Welcome back, buddy. Tom? You did great. What did I... As the fog in your head starts to dissipate, it finally dawns on you that your sudden panic attack triggered after the teacher left the classroom. I, I, I had a panic attack after the teacher left? Tom looks at you with a sincere smile. He doesn't know how to answer such a question without personal experience. All he can do is smile and cool his words for you to relax. Must have bottled up too much anxiety, huh? You look down, embarrassed by the situation, and notice his hand intertwined with yours. It was a lifeline that pulled you out of the darkness. In fact, it's always been a lifeline ever since Tom barged in with a cake in hand. As Tom notices your gaze, he slowly pulls away, not wanting to be the cause of more anxiety. Can, can we stay like this? Just, just a little more? At first, Tom is shot by initiative. But slowly his smile softens, firmly re-establishing his hold with yours. You take all the time you need. After a few moments... Tom finally lets go and places his arm around your shoulder, rubbing the side of your arm. 
Uh, let's get you some fresh air. Okay. Wait, where's John? Oh, I told him to fetch a nurse, just in case. <laughs> we should wait for him. I'll text him to meet us outside. Come on. Oh, hold on. Tom picks up your hat. Hats it off and hands it to you. You take it and give Tom a few glances before you put it on. What? Thanks. There we go. That was a slightly shorter update as Mon she would probably want me to point out. It's a good one, I think. Has it really been two months? I haven't been keeping track here. And of course, the Patreon link is in the uh, description if you want to go and support Monchi. And also the link for Itch, so you can uh, download the next update for Socially Awkward. So I hope you enjoyed that little uh, midweek video. And of course, we'll be back on the weekend with another video. And before I go, I should give a quick mention to Grizz, Seven King, David Taylor, The Beholder, Samuto, Dissonance, Brandon Bradford, Anubis Silverwind, Ida Corval, Tiger Cub, Rusty Alvarado, Gunnar Muller, Ryan Hall, Marcus, and Leems. And as I've said before, I do appreciate them and all my patrons. Thanks for the help. So I hope you enjoyed this midweek video. I'll be back again on the weekend with another one. And until then, thanks for watching. Bye for now.